Okay, John. Yeah. Um, the early days of comics, original comics, not mm -hmm. necessarily stuff that was reprints, right. but original comics. Malcolm Wheeler and Nicholson started out. Um, wh what can you say about it? Well, I mean, the, the real origins, you know, they had famous funnies on the uh, stand. It was slick, but it was just the reprints. And apparently the reprint rights were so high that it was cheaper to get new stuff from struggling artists. So he started up, uh, you know, the magazine New Fun, the emphasis on new. And uh, that went into more fun. And uh, he created that and some of the earlier titles, such as Detective Comics, which we all know is where DC Comics gets his name. Um, they were struggling for an art form. As I understand, a lot of the people in some of these early companies and shops were either aspiring cartoonists who were looking for their first jobs or people who were looking to make it a career. From that little chestnut with this new material, um, he also created something called New Comics, which was a standard form. Things, all other things were going on. New Fun Six, which is where Siegel and Schuster had their first Doctor Occult, was their first start. And because they had another feature in it, they scrambled their names because they wanted to look like they had a big staff. But what a lot of people don't know is the other shops that were going on. One little four-issue uh, comic book that was there was called Wow, What a Magazine, sporting a, a Dick Briefer cover. And issue two is very important because it's the first Eisner cover. And what you see in a lot of these early books, it was a lot of it was derivative from the pulps. But in Wow, What a Magazine, which la uh, John Henley was the publisher, you see Bob Kane, you see Will Eisner, you know, groping for a, an art form. The other person who thought he could make money, and apparently thought he could make money doing anything, was Harry Chesler. And uh, if you ever talk to Gil Fox, he'll regale you about Harry Chesler stories. But, but Harry had people come through his shop uh, a lot of people who were just getting their first breaks, and you know, we're talking Cole, we're talking Schwab, Bob Wood, again, groping for what was going to work. Chesler's earliest titles were something called Star Comics, which was sort of a humor sort of thing. And Chesler, interesting enough, you may not know this, always, always was looking to syndicate into newspapers because comics at this time, again, were looked as the poor sister of comic strip art. But Chesler had a parallel publication where now in 1937 called Star Ranger. And then that kind of collapsed and he did the art for another line of comics, and you have to trace this back, called Ultim, which was Ullman and Temerson. But if you trace that backwards, you'll find another DC root. And the DC root is in a comic book that came out in 36 called Comic Magazine. And eventually it was called The Funny Pages. Cook and McMahon worked for DC, and this is even before it was DC, they weren't paying their bills. So these guys left. And the reason these early issues of funny pages are so important is they are simply the DC features that were in new funnies and new comics simply with the change in name. Dr. Occult was Dr. Mystic. Comic Magazine One has the second installment of the story of where Dr. Occult gets his cape and also has a little emblem on his chest who went on obviously the Siegel and Schuster mythos of Superman. But as you trace this through, Comic Magazine turned into funny pages and then at issue six, what I call the world's ugliest cover by a guy named Ellis Edwards, you have a two-page teaser in November of 36 called The Clock by George Brenner. The clock is important because the clock is the first masked character in comics. He was a cover feature as they grew in funny picture stories. And then there was a sister's title of detective picture stories, which came out cover dated December 36. For the longest time, detective comics was attributed to be the longest, was the first single theme dedication to the detective thing. Not true. Detective picture stories was. Although I told you about the clock and it was called Funny Picture Stories, the true title of it should have been Adventure Picture Stories because that's what it was. Again, a lot of it was derivative of the pulps. Um, and then what you saw happen was the two lines converged of the Chessler, the Star and Star Ranger, the Funny Pages, Funny Picture Stories, Detective Picture Stories, and those coalesced into Centaur. 
stopping a little before the birth of Superman, what's interesting, you have a title called Keen Detective Funnies. Cover art not attributed in Overstreet, but I found out who the cover artist was when I went to visit him and he popped up and he said, do you know what this is? Gil Fox was the first cover artist for that. But these comic books are very important because everyone was groping for something that was going to work. The other kind of title that came out early, and Eisner again was influential, was this, Western Picture Stories, four issues. Eisner, who could see that you could make some money here, formed with Iger a shop. And what is a little known fact is before they created Jumbo Comics for Fiction House with Sheena, all of that material was originally packaged and sent to England and came out in a publication called WAGS. So you see everyone groping for what was working. People didn't know what was going to work until um, someone finally gave the editorial okay to go forward with action one. But the reason this period I find fascinating and I collect is all of these guys who became very famous, Bob Kane went on to Batman, he's doing humor strips in these early things. All of these guys are cutting their teeth here, developing their craft, and it's that craft which uh, really shows the genius and the versatility uh, of these early pioneers and creators of this, um, the true pre-hero stage of comic books. Perfect. How do you like that? Is that okay? Wow. I just made that up, huh? Yeah.